Hey there, Maya, the College Advisor, back again with another video. Um, so this one is really just for my seniors, um, just all seniors really. So we're just gonna talk about like just the final things that seniors need to be working on right now and just kind of go through this like senior checklist um, that I created um, uh, like a couple years ago. Um, so yeah, so it's just something, I know everything is going kind of crazy right now, but it's still still something that I feel like is important just to make sure you get in, um, we'll get done, like all the final things that you need to do to be ready to go to college this fall. So, you know, whenever the world opens back up, let's say it is August and then boom, you're going to college, you know, like a couple weeks after that, um, we want to make sure that you have everything ready before you get there. So sharing my screen so you all can see the checklist. All right, so the final steps to becoming a college student. Woo, college. Um, so <clears throat> this is something that I was going to like, of course, physically hand out <laughs> to my students um, this month. So I can't do that, but here is a virtual version. And then obviously we can walk through it and talk about it. So uh, it's separated into two parts. It's before orientation and after orientation, uh, just because there are a few things that are um, really important that needs to happen before you attend orientation and enrollment at your college that you're going to. Um, so just, you know, in case you didn't know, so orientation and enrollment is the day that everything basically comes official, becomes official for the college that you're going to in the fall. So that would be the day that you are meeting with your advisor to sign up for your classes for your for the fall. Um, they usually print out like a fall schedule. You can take a tour of the campus. Um, they go through presentations on you know where to find resources on campus. So like where do you go if you need tutoring help? Where do you go um, if you have some mental health um, concerns or like issues or anything like that going on? You just want to talk to somebody. Where's the counseling center? Um, so just different resources and things that are offered throughout the campus. They also talk about, you know, how the meal plans work and, you know, whatever type of things that you need to fix or get done. Um, they usually have people available that day. So if like you get to orientation, you still need to sign up for housing or like something's going on with your financial aid. They usually have people there that day to like get everything taken care of. So by the time August comes, like you are ready to go. So that's orientation. That's what it is. Some schools call it registration some schools just say enrollment um, I think Mizzou calls it like summer welcome it's all the same event you're going there to you know oh you take your ID picture so you gotta make sure you look cute so your ID picture for college is great because you have the same one all four years of college trust me you have to make sure you look nice that day so you have a nice ID picture um, anyway the checklist so um, first thing on here, it's separated in categories. So housing is a big thing. Uh, some colleges have two separate things where you apply for housing and then there's a housing contract. Um, if there is a separate one, make sure you do them in order. You do all the steps for housing. Um, so applying for it, completing the housing contract is gonna be a big thing. That's just letting the college know that you are coming to campus in the fall and you do wanna stay on campus. If you do not fill out a housing contract, there will not be a spot for you to live on campus in the fall. So that has to be done ASAP. I know at this point, most colleges are having, most colleges are having students go in and um, pick their rooms and everything in the spring. They usually have you fill it out maybe like in the late winter and then you get to pick your actual rooms in the spring. Every college is different. So just be looking out um, at your inbox, your email inbox and stuff for that. Paying the housing deposit, that's a big thing. It's usually like $100, $200, maybe $300 at some colleges. So you can pay that deposit. Some colleges do have um, processes to where you can break that up into smaller payments. So maybe you can do $100 now or like $100 every month and break that up. Um, or some colleges may say just pay $100 and we'll put the rest of it on your fall bill. Um, so it's up to you to contact the college to ask about those things. They're not going to tell you that automatically because, of course, they want their money. Um, so that's something that you'll have to contact them and ask them if they can do that, especially if you don't have that um, $200 or $300 right now, which is very understandable. Um, even if it wasn't um, everything going on with the coronavirus, that was still something that colleges will do it for you anyway. Signing up for an academic floor or a learning community. So this is only something that's optional that if you're interested in it. So a learning community would be basically like, they would have a group of like all the engineering majors staying on one floor of one of the residence halls. So that way y'all can be friends and study together. And then um, if y'all are all freshmen, which I think most people 
they only have freshmen in those, um, then you're probably taking a lot of the same like introduction classes and stuff with each other. So it's a really good way just to kind of build a community on the campus, make some friends, get some study sessions and stuff going. And just to be able to know somebody else like in your major. I know a lot of my friends didn't have the same major as me. So I had to like make friends that were in the same major so we could talk about um, our classes and do assignments and stuff like that together. So that's a great thing. If you're interested in that, go ahead and do it. Find your roommate slash like pick your roommate. Um, so this is something that some colleges will probably be having you doing um, either when you do the housing contract or after you do the housing contract. So just make sure you're checking your emails to find that. Um, some colleges have like kind of, uh, I don't really know what to call it, kind of like a social media type thing uh, where you're able to see people's profiles and kind of pick your roommate that way. You can like message each other and say like, oh, hey, like I saw on your profile that you're really into anime. Me too. Like let's, let's be friends and exchange information and be roommates. So some colleges have processes like that. Other colleges, they just kind of pick your roommate for you and then just send you their name and their phone number and it's up to you to be friends. So depends on the college, but that should be something that's going on right now um, in most places. Choose your room, so same thing. Every college is different. Look out for your emails. All right, finances, this is the big thing. Make sure your FAFSA is done. Make sure your FAFSA is done correctly. So you could have done the FAFSA and the FAFSA will let you know if you have something on there that needs to be changed or something that doesn't look right. If you, you know, accidentally put like your mom's income for your income and now you have like this super high income for your household, like that's something that you're going to have to make sure you, you go back and you check um, that your FAFSA is, is correct and everything on there is correct. Um, completing the verification process, that's the biggest thing right now that most students are doing. Um, so the verification process, FAFSA either will send you um, something saying like, hey, we need you to just verify this information to make sure it's correct. And then your colleges will send you like a worksheet or an email or something saying, hey, we need you to verify this information to make sure it's correct. So if your college has sent you a worksheet or a link to a worksheet that says, please verify this information from your FAFSA, please send that information back to them. That is important. It is not just something fun that they're asking for for no reason. That is like, we will not give you money if you don't fill out these worksheets and these forms that we've sent to you. So please make sure that you do that um, ASAP. And then accepting and declining financial aid awards. So if you've done your FAFSA, you've done your verification process, or if you didn't get selected for verification, um, the financial aid letters have been sent to you, and that gives you an outline of how much money the college is offering you and how much um, money in like grants, scholarships, and loans. So depending on like what things that you want to accept and not accept, so say you want to accept all your scholarships and grants, but then decline your loans, you need to go into like your online college portal to do that. Um, or some colleges, they have it on the letter, we can fill it out in per like in person, like on paper, um, and then mail it back to them, letting them know like which of the things that they are offering you, you're going to accept and decline. So you need to do that um, now. If you have your financial aid letters, do it now, so that way you're ready to go. Um, complete loan requirements. So this is something that kind of happens uh, throughout the throughout the summer. So like you, you would say that you're accepting the loans and then once you do get your final bill or like your first actual bill, so you know exactly how much money you're gonna be needing in loans, um, which usually comes like around the summertime, uh, then that's when you're gonna be looking at some loan requirements and figuring out like, okay, like this is how much I actually need to take out and what I need to do going into that process. And then reporting private scholarships and outside funding. So all the scholarships that you have hopefully been applying for um, these past few months, if you've been awarded some of those scholarships, go ahead and like let the college know. There should be some sort of form. Um, if not, maybe just email the financial aid office and ask like, hey, like where do I let you know that I've gotten outside scholarships? So that goes for um, just anything that you've applied for that they've hey congratulations you've been awarded the scholarship so definitely don't do it if you've just applied and you don't know if you got it yet only do that if you know for a fact that you have gotten the scholarship and it's it's happening and it's real and then orientation and enrollment itself Woo! so make sure you register for orientation obviously you can't get your class schedule and your id picture taken and all that stuff if you don't actually register for the event so register for orientation and enrollment 
Um, some colleges do have an enrollment deposit or orientation fee. Um, some of those things, you can ask the college if there's a way, um, same thing with housing, you can ask them if there's a way to like break it into payments or put it on your fall bill. That's called deferment. It's putting things on your fall bill so you can pay it later. So um, you can definitely ask them about that. If they say no, then you gotta, you know, you gotta pay it unfortunately right now. So that's something that's going on. Um, register for an extended orientation or summer program if interested. So this is optional. Um, some colleges do offer like a, you know, move, maybe like a move in early type of thing. I know, I think UCM has like a move in early um, summer program. So that way you kind of get to get like a sneak peek at college life and get started and get ahead of everybody basically before you get there. Um, so that's something that they do. I know at K-State, there's, it's called a Wildcat Warm Up, and it's a weekend in the summertime where you would go and, like, stay on campus for the weekend, and they, like, basically show you around campus, show you around Manhattan. Um, so it's just, like, if that's something that you're interested in, um, I would definitely say sign up for it. If you just want to, like, get to know your college a little bit better before you get there in August, that'd be something I'd recommend. Take the mass placement exam. So if you have not taken college algebra or... I think intermediate algebra is maybe another one. If you haven't taken like a college level math, you're gonna have to take college level math in your, in your first year of college. So there's usually a math placement exam that colleges have you take. So they know where you are in terms of like your math skills. So they know which math to put you in. So that's something that they usually will let you know either before orientation or at orientation. Submit your vaccination records. This is important because I mean, it's important in general, but it's definitely important now because the colleges want to make sure before they let you move onto the campus and in the dorms that you are healthy and that you have gotten all your shots. Because if you have not gotten your, your, your updated shots and things like that that you need right now, um, you know, you could, you're possibly like a health risk to everybody else that lives in the dorms. Um, so that's something that's super important that needs to be submitted. So they just want to make sure that you're okay um, with moving in and being around hundreds of other people. Submitting your official ACT score. So if you've taken the ACT, um, definitely like whatever the last score you had or your highest score that you've gotten out of all the times you've taken it, go ahead and send that to your college. Um, either you, you might have already sent it from when you first took the ACT and you listed the colleges on the ACT, but if you didn't do that, go ahead and send them your, your ACT stuff now. And then taking a modern language placement test, if you're planning on, this is only if you're planning on studying a language. So if you're saying like, okay, I wanna be like a Spanish minor, or something like that when I get to college or like a French minor, whichever language you're, you're picking. Um, you have to take a test, so that way it's the same as the math test, just to figure out how much of it you already know, so they know where to place you. If you already are pretty good um, with the Spanish language, maybe they'll start you off in Spanish two instead of Spanish one. Um, so that's basically what the placement test is for. Submit your final high school transcripts. This is something that happens obviously after the school year is over. They want to get your full four years worth of um, GPAs and grades and all that stuff. So go ahead and submit that um, after graduation whenever they can get it to you, which, you know, is a little bit weirder now. Might be a little, might look a little different than normally would, um, but definitely just want to submit that as soon as you, as soon as you get it, um, whenever you get some time. Submitting college transcripts. So that's if you're taking any college classes for dual credit. So if you're taking some college classes at the local community college or um, whatever college or your school may be partnered with for dual credit, make sure you submit those transcripts to the college as well. So that way the college will know that you've already taken some of those classes. You don't have to take them again when you get to college. And then review the course catalog to find, to find courses that interest you. So I put this as optional. I'm a nerd. So I went onto the website and was like, okay, you know, what classes look cool on here? What classes sound cool that I can take? Um, so that's just like an optional thing. Um, so once you actually get to orientation, your, your academic advisor will give you like a like suggestions on what you should enroll in and then help you enroll for that first time. Um, but if you're just really wanting to be intentional about the first classes that you take in college, you can definitely look beforehand to see what classes are offered in the fall. And then you can already come with a plan once you get to orientation. So that's before orientation. And then after orientation, you know, the things are, things are getting really real. This is going to be, you know, the summertime, things to do over the summer before school starts. Um, so bills usually go out in like July. So go ahead and view your bill and then sign up for a payment plan. Um, unless you, you know, you got some money like that, you can go ahead and pay your bill up front for the semester altogether. Or the payment plan will break it up for 
each month. So it'll be like, okay, here's your August, September, um, October bills. So that's that. And then complete the online alcohol and sexual assault education program. This may not be offered everywhere, but I feel like it's offered in most colleges. And that's something they usually, usually might send you like after orientation. It's just like a informational type of like online webinar thing where you're just learning about um, alcohol and sexual assault and you, you kind of take like some quizzes to make sure that you're um, aware of the different things and making sure that you're informed and you can be safe and make safe decisions while you're in college. And then look up your textbooks. So um, you can do this at orientation. So you can figure out which textbooks that you need for your classes. And you can either buy them like at the campus bookstore or you can go like on Amazon, eBay or Chegg is a really good website, C-H-E-G-G. -G. Um, they usually have really good cheap books, uh, textbooks for college. So looking up your textbooks so that way you're ready once school starts. Um, some people will buy them before school starts and then other people will buy them after the first day of school, um, just because you want to make sure that you're actually using it. I think I had uh, maybe like one or two classes where some of the textbooks I bought, we like never really read them. And it was kind of mad. I was kind of mad because I could have, you know, saved some money, but whatever. In the past. <laughs> um, Moving day slash moving weekend. It's usually the Saturday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday before classes start that Monday. And then your first bill is going to be due on the first day of class. So you need to make sure that you look at it and you have your payment plan or whatever set up before the first day of school, because that is when your very first college bill is due, is on the first day of school. And then boom, first day of school is happening, woo, um, college. And then um, I put on here again, buy your textbooks and stuff, either from the bookstore or online. So that's something you can do before college starts um, or after college, just to, after college, after the first day, um, just to make sure that you're actually gonna be using and needing all your textbooks on a regular basis. So that is the senior year checklist final steps to becoming a college student. Um, I will put the link to the checklist um, in the description box, of course. You can go and download it. It's also on our website. Feel free to go and look there for other checklists and stuff. Um, but yeah, reach out to your college advisor if you have any questions about anything that's um, pressing or maybe there's some things on that list that you, you don't understand quite well and that you need help with. Um, reach out to your college advisor. We are here to help. Um, and that is it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Okay, bye. <laughs>